Hi all, hello, Adi Axos family. New week, new chances, new opportunities. And with that being said, welcome to today's five minute mindset session. I'm Coach Jacob and yeah, super glad you tuned in. Today we are going to deal with the question, what is our ideal inner emotional state and more specifically our ideal level of arousal, our zone to perform best possible. No matter if it is sports performance we focus on or the job and business environment. I guess we all know situations when we perceived ourselves to be too nervous and excited before any occasion or too apathetic and unmotivated before an event where we had to perform well. So what's behind all of that? But before digging deeper there, let's do our routinely breathing to dial in to calm down and since we're talking about optimal zones today here, to zone in. Therefore, all that stress of today aside and focus on the next couple of minutes. We are going to build up on what we did last week on Friday, that was box breathing. The pattern fundam fundamentally was inhale, retention, exhale, retention. We did that with four seconds. So. Four seconds in, four seconds hold, four seconds out, four seconds hold. Today, we simply just add one second to each stage, hands. Today, we breathe five seconds in, we hold our breath for five seconds, we exhale for five, then we hold for five, and so on. In total, one breath cycle or one breath box takes, therefore, exactly 20 seconds. We will go for five cycles today. So in the next 100 seconds, just a bit longer than one and a half minute, close your eyes if you want to and breathe. Before, take a deep inhale, followed by an exhale to full capacity and then five in, five hold, five out, five hold. Fantastic. Now, as a brief introduction, three short personal stories. Story number one. When I was a child and in school, I told my parents at dinner that I'm already nervous because of an exam I had the next day. I obviously do not remember exactly what they replied, but basically they said that I should take my nervousness as a good sign, as it means I take the exam seriously. Otherwise, maybe I wouldn't have learned that much and wouldn't be prepared as well as I was. And I think the exam really went quite smoothly the next day. Second story. A few years later, different school, different situation, different exam. A good friend of mine told me 
He was so nervous and almost anxious, he kind of blacked out during the exam and couldn't remember anything he had learned before. Story number three. Soccer cup match against a lower division club. It was not intentional, but you could feel we as a team were convinced to be superior, that we will dominate and win the match. It ultimately worked out. However, the performance that brought us into the next round was nothing else but poor. And that's what our coach definitely let us know in the following training week. So, in order to put these stories in a nutshell, first story, my slight nervousness in the evening before the exam, more or less right zone for optimal performance. Second story, my friend who blacked out somewhere above that certain level for optimal performance. And third story, cup match against the lower division club, definitely below that level. Now, what I have tried to illustrate with these real life examples is scientifically explored and described by the Jörg Stotzen law. Generally, the term arousal indicates our physiological alertness, how awake or attentive we are and is closely related to motivation and interest, but also agitation, anxiety and stress. According to the Jörg Stotzen law, we have an inversely U-shaped relationship between arousal on the x-axis and task performance on the y-axis. So to break this down, the Jörg Stotzen law states we perform poorly under fatigue and sleepiness and boredom on the left side of this bell curve and also under stress, anxiety or even panic on the other extreme. Therefore, the sweet spot is somewhere between. Looking at this explanation and this curve, the optimal condition or zone for optimal performance is a moderate level of arousal. Now, relating there to two things that I want to highlight at this point. Based on the Jörg Stotzen law, we can start to grasp and already get an impression of the importance of recovery and rest like sleep, like proper sleep to avoid the left arousal spectrum. Similarly, we see why strategies like breathing or meditation are crucial to move away from the stress and anxiety sites towards the beneficial mid-state a moderate level of arousal that is beneficial to boost our performance. Now, the Jörg Stotzen law is a good starting point to begin thinking about this topic. However, we have to admit it is a bit more complicated than simply this inversely u-shaped relationship and only one-dimensional conceptualization of arousal. There are more things we actually have to take into consideration if we want to identify individual zones for optimal functioning. And that is exactly the reason why we are going to talk about IZOF, our individual zones for optimal functioning, further aspects and influencing factors as well as some more approaches that might help us to affect and increase or decrease our arousal in order to upgrade your performance in our next Mindset Practice on Friday. For today, that's it. I leave you with that. Food of thought. Have a great week, everyone. Cheers and see you next time.